What's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this first day of November 2022. It's about 10.24 a.m. my time here along the uh, west coast in California. Latest quake shows a 2.8 earthquake down here around the Chile area. About, uh, looks like 139 kilometers deep for that earthquake. A little bit of uh, amping up of movement overnight. It looks like right around the Fiji area and also uh, Northern California. So we're going to start off here with the uh, Yellowstone update, uh, which they put out monthly, monthly here from the USGS Volcanoes website. Kind of looking forward to this. There was actually not a whole lot of new information in here. They did talk about uh, putting in some uh, field work uh, stations. They did quite a bit of field work out there, installing some stations, uh, temperature monitoring stations, and some GPS station uh, deployment out there as far as uh, the field work goes. Uh, looks like they mentioned a little bit of the seismicity that we've seen as far as the earthquake swarming goes at Yellowstone. Looks like uh, 344 earthquakes were listed uh, during the month of October. It is a part of an ongoing sequence of swarms that occurred back on July 29th of this year. Um, let's see here. So there was a couple different sequences of uh, earthquake swarms here. Looks like the one, um, the main one kind of that we're seeing around the northwest corner of the park, there was 238, earth, 238 earthquakes. But also, um, looks like 344 for a total of the month, but that included some other locations, a couple different, uh, swarming locations uh, near the Old Faithful area uh, and also a little small swarm of 15 earthquakes it looks like um, just outside of the West Yellowstone region and the only thing they really mentioned here is earthquake sequences like these are common and account for roughly 50 percent of the total seismicity in the Yellowstone area um, of course they end with and with the uh, Yellowstone activity is currently above background levels, which is probably a good saying because we've been seeing a earth, uh, this earthquake swarm last for quite a while. And there's, I'd like to get a total tally. I know there was way more than uh, 344 earthquakes. I think we had that just alone there in October. A uh, little change in ground deformation has been recorded over the past month by continuous GPS stations in Yellowstone. Uh, both areas hinted. Uh, that's going to be Yellowstone Caldera and and near uh, Norris Geyser Basin. Both areas hinted at a transition from slight uplift to slight subsidence of about one centimeter or less than an inch. So, and then they talk about how every midsummer or mid-September, uh, which is a looks like which is a style of deformation that occurs every summer due to changes in groundwater conditions, but I can't recall. That, uh, I mean, you know, we get these swarms every summer, but they are talking about uh, this GPS, little slight uplift and uh, subsidence every September, how groundwater just kind of swells the land a little bit, which is kind of interesting there, right? Uh, the long-term rate of caldera subsidence since 2015 is a few centimeters per year, so looks like gradual subsidence. But uh, th that's about it for the earthquake activity, as far as a mention of it goes. I uh, don't really say exactly what it is, what's causing it. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview and see what we got for the latest activity. And again, most of the swarming activity has been confined to this northwest corner of the park. Uh, and noted they did have a couple different uh, swarming locations here further south into the caldera and also over here to the west, uh, kind of towards the uh, Hebgen Lake area. So current activity here looking at the graph uh, does still show some earthquake activity across the region nothing big nothing spectacular just a couple small microquakes there listed on the graph and i believe that uh, the usgs has posted some of those looks like there's about five earthquakes or so uh, including the ones that we've seen uh, overnight it looks like are listed up there as well so just an ongoing, a uh, little ongoing swarm here. See how long it's going to continue. 
Uh, latest quake up here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, 1.1 up in Washington. Uh, as far as general movement goes, uh, most of the activity has been confined here to the west coast, it looks like, into uh, inner, the inner portion here of the um, North American plate around the uh, Nevada area. 2.4 outside of Virginia City. That uh, earthquake just coming in, it looks like. Within the last hour, now Yellow or uh, Mount Lassen up here had some activity yesterday, and um, we're looking at the seismograph stations there of that volcano, which is still currently sitting at green. Haven't really seen anything on the updates. I'm going to check that just to make sure. Uh, the latest information informational statement here on Mount Lassen shows um, really no mention of the course this was put out on the 18th so there's no way they'd mention the activity we've seen over the past couple days uh, but they do talk about earthquake swarms are not unusual um, but there really wasn't a whole lot of swarming back when they put out this uh, this statement so let's go ahead and check out the seismograph here now and see what's going on around this area of Mount Lassen and sometimes this thing acts a little weird. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. Um, this is just one portion of the last 24 hours here on the graph. And it was much, much more active yesterday. Uh, a lot more earthquakes showing up here on the map. So it looks like overnight and this morning time frame, things are kind of tapering off as far as the earthquake activity goes. Notice that. Uh, went from a whole bunch of spikes here on the map to very minimal. Now, this stuff that you see right here, uh, the thickening of the line of the seismograph reading is wind. It is windy out here in Northern California right now. Uh, and Mount Lassen sits up behind me into the mountains up there, thousands of feet above me. And uh, it's much windier. They got quite a bit of snow coming in uh, today and uh, overnight. So those are wind events that are kind of showing up here on this graph right now. But earthquake activity looks like it has died off as of uh, this morning time period. But still, we'll definitely keep an eye on that uh, because these swarms pop up out of the blue. And of course, USGS here only showed about three earthquakes of those possibly 100 or more uh, little spikes there on that graph. All right, throughout the Bay Area, got some movement around the uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field today. Very typical earthquake activity here for this region. A lot of um, oh, hydrothermal operations going on, going on here in this area. Around the Vallejo area, actually north of Berkeley, it looks like. A little bit of movement yesterday and also this morning time period. A couple of microquakes there under 2.5. The rest of California, as we look down south here, uh, really nothing showing up in the last hour or so. Most of the movement here from last night or earlier this morning, we did have some activity off the coast of LA. 2.8, very shallow earthquake out there. Um, way out in the Pacific, a couple different fault segments listed offshore. Uh, no major swarming noted around the San Andreas Fault and uh, it looks like most of the activity there is from um, uh, the overnight time period. All right, let's see what else we got. Oklahoma, actually a lot of this here looks like it was from yesterday. Not, seen, not really seeing too much newer movement here across the area. Uh, outside of Woodward, Oklahoma, 2.4 coming in. That one was uh, uh, about five hours or so ago. And some other smaller quakes within the region of this swarming area. Again, some of this from yesterday, some of it from earlier this morning. Nothing really new, though, within the last couple hours. And the eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Um, same for about the El Salvador area. We've seen this quake come in. Uh, looks like that came in this morning, a couple hours ago, just off the coast of the El Salvador area, not really deep, sitting sitting right there at about 10 kilometers or so on the Middle America Trench. Uh, looks like two o'clock in the morning. We did see some further activity though. Down dip, uh, much deeper 
about 219 kilometers deep. So adjustment downstream, we're uh, earthquakes down into the subduction zone with a little bit of minimal adjustment back towards the uh, well, towards where the locked area is, so to speak, where the stress builds up along the subduction zone. So nothing big yet, but still watch watch that area. They can get some big ones. South America, a couple spotty earthquakes uh, in that area. Up into Alaska, uh, looks a little bit more active than last night's update, uh, but not much. Around the Cook Inlet, getting a little swarm of activity. And also over here, is this that Trident Volcano again? Yes, it is. Uh, this area has seen a little bit of swarming on and off here over the last couple months. Uh, nothing major, nothing, nothing uh, I don't think we have to worry about yet, but uh, still just kind of uh, noteworthy to watch these periodic swarms in that area. Western Pacific, pretty quiet here across the, uh, the west here. Some movement back onto the Philippine Plate. Uh, also towards Taiwan, a couple small earthquakes coming in early this morning, about 1 o'clock or so, 5.4, uh, and also a 4.2 from earlier in the night. Recent activity, it looks like, around Tonga right now within the last hour, 4.6. This one pretty deep, 532 kilometers into the Tonga Trench region. And New Zealand, uh, I know I've seen some activity there on the globe. Uh, we'll check out EMSC here in just a little bit. Starting to see that westward, forward westward migration here of quakes around the Himalayas up into, um, into this area of the world. Looks like a 4.0, that one coming in yesterday. But some further activity throughout China and the Myanmar area. Uh, no further activity around the Italy area following that 5.4. I don't see any aftershock sequences up there, but I'm sure they're um, listed on the EMSC uh, model, just not on the USGS here. All right, so let's go ahead and double check the EMSC model and see what we got for data. Um, let's see, far as larger earthquakes, these, these all look about the same as the uh, USGS here. A little bit of activity into the Gulf of California, it looks like. A uh, 4.1. Uh, but far as this activity around Italy, uh, let's see what we got. I'm sure some aftershock sequences around the region. Looks like a couple twos out there. So definitely uh, some aftershock sequences there following that 5.1 earthquake yesterday. All right, let's see uh, what else we got here. Space weather events. Looks like uh, not a whole lot of activity right now popping off on the sun. Uh, we do have one coronal hole that is facing us currently. And again, this will kind of um, could provide us with some uh, conditions here. In the next oh couple nights or so after probably after about the second or third time period, uh, we should see a little bit of a adjustment to the forecast from uh, some potential high uh, solar wind stream flowing from that uh, coronal hole. As far as solar weather activity uh, goes in the sunspot department, these are not. Uh, let me get the latest image here. These are not looking the. Uh, not looking promising whatsoever. Uh, in fact, this is kind of a, a little bit less promising than what we were looking at last night, far as it producing any type of flaring. Uh, getting a lot of separation here between these fields, and that's not necessarily good. This sunspot here may be trying to get uh, a little bit of activity going. Uh, and that is going to be 3136. And uh, but right now nothing's really popping off at all. We don't have any C flares, uh, no M flares, obviously. Trying to get up there, it looks like maybe one little bitty one, but man, that was that was about it. <laughs> not a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot of sunspot flaring potential. But we'll definitely watch it and see what comes up here. 
All right, folks, have a good morning. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I'm going to get out here. i got to find some firewood. Um, cold weather is kind of setting in a little bit for California standards. So got to keep Missy Mimi's warm. She likes it. She likes the place warm, which is all right. Just not too hot. Uh, let's see here. There's a 4.0 there in Mexico on the EMSC globe, which was not listed on the uh, USGS page. Alrighty, we'll keep an eye on it. Either way, um, we'll be back a little bit later on tonight, folks, and uh, see what happens throughout the day today. Get a new month, and uh, it's basically coming into winter time. So, kind of glad for the uh, seasonal change. I couldn't imagine living somewhere where it's just sunny and 100 degrees all the time. That's just, oh man, I get tired of our four months of 110 degrees. So, I say bring on the cold weather. It kind of motivates me, makes me want to be outside doing stuff. <laughs> a lot better to deal with the cold instead of the heat. All right, folks, have a good day. We'll catch you a little bit later on tonight, uh, unless, of course, unless something major happens. Have a good one.